Welcome to this supplementary material uh, for the Internet Communications and Internet Studies units at Curtin University. In this supplementary video I am going to walk you through how to use WordPress.com as your web presence's central node. So we are going to cover four things. Firstly how to sign up to WordPress.com Secondly, we're going to look at choosing a theme, which is, if you like, the visual look of your WordPress presence. Then we're going to look at creating both posts and pages and the difference between those two things. And finally, we're going to look at integrating your contributing nodes. So whatever those other tools you've chosen as your contributing nodes for your web presence. But we're going to use the specific examples of Flickr and Twitter. Okay, so let's get started. So we're going to go through the sign up process. Um, three things to keep in mind. Firstly, try and use a consistent name across all of your services. When you first started, uh, say if you're doing Web 101 and 11, um, then you probably will have chosen a username across all of the, of the services you've signed up for. Try and stick with that. When you pick a name for your blog, please pick a sensible name if you're going to use something that is different from your username. And finally, this is an independent system, so please don't forget your password as I and the administrators at Curtin University cannot retrieve a lost WordPress.com password for you. It is your responsibility to manage that. Okay, let's go and have a look at WordPress.com. Okay, so this is the front page of WordPress.com. So we're going to go through from the very beginning as if we've never signed up before. So we're going to go to sign up now, which is the big orange button. And so what do we need? Firstly, we need a username. So for our purpose, we're going to use web101 underscore test. Very imaginative. Then a password. And then we have to confirm by putting in the same password again. An email address. Which is whatever you happen to be using. You can use your Curtin student address here. You do need to tick that you read the terms of service, but please do take a look. Don't just sign up to them. So we'll just have a quick squiz. I've read these before, so I will just scroll down it quickly. But please read it because you're working in the public view. You're working on the web, so you need to be conscious of the terms and conditions you're signing up for. So make sure that this is still ticked, that give me a blog, because you want to set up a blog, not just a username, and click Next, and it will do the work for you. Okay, so what have we done here? Web101 underscore test I can't use because I can't have an underscore, so I'll get rid of the underscore in that, so it'll be Web101 test. And I've already used this email address once before, so I'll have to think up something else. Let's use my curtain address then. So, teach on. Okay, let's see if that works for us. Okay, so here we go. Our blog's going to be called web101test.wordpress.com. We're going to call it web101. That's all we need. But you can obviously put whatever you like there, and you can, as it say, you can change that whenever you like. We'll default to English and we'll default to having it listed um, as searchable. You don't have to do that. If you don't want it searchable, don't. And I'll just turn Chrome off from saving that. So sign up. Excellent, and we're away. OK, so I'm going to have to confirm that uh, address that I have entered by uh, clicking a confirmation link in my email. I won't do that now um, because it says that I don't need to. Uh, you will need to do that if you want to um, use that address with your WordPress account. Do 
confirm it, otherwise you won't be able to sign in after two days. Okay, for the purposes of this I'm going to use not my name, but rather somebody else's web test. And this is a test of a web 101 web presence. Obviously you write something more meaningful there. But we'll save that profile, which is the person profile that goes with the web presence. Dum, 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 dum. Let it take its time. Did I click that properly? Maybe I didn't. Let's try that again. Okay, so I have now confirmed my WordPress account by going to my email address, clicking the confirmation link. We're all good. So I will get rid of that and go back to the web presence that I was creating. Now I will probably need to go back to the top level and sign in now. So I'll go back to the top of WordPress.com and I can sign in. So web 101 test and the password that I have entered previously and login. Alright, I'm in. So what is this? I don't want to save this password, let's just get rid of that. So we see that we've got web101test.wordpress.com We've got a dashboard for that which is if you like the central control panel which is where we'll go momentarily but I just want to quickly open that up in a new tab so you can see what we've got. So from the very beginning what have we got? We've got web101, here is our blog, we've got an initial post just to welcome us here and we've got an initial about page and set up. We've got an initial look, if you like, so we've got a default theme, but we can change that and everything else if we want to. Okay, so let's go to our dashboard. So we've done the sign up process. We're now going to go to the next step. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is think about the theme or look of our word presence blog page. And we're going to consider a number of things when we're thinking about the way that the web presence looks. First of all, we might think about whether the header is customizable. Now this means can we change the header, so the top bit of the blog, to become a photograph or a picture? Can we change the colors? Secondly, do we want one, two, or three columns? Do we want a very busy, um, text-heavy web presence or do we just want something that's simplistic, maybe just a one column? Uh, what sort of colour scheme are we after? Are we going for a light, crisp, um, whitish background? Are we going for a dark background? Um, how do we want the fonts to look? And is further customization possible? How much detail can we change? And it's significant because these themes that we're looking at all have different options associated with them as we'll see in a minute. Okay, so let's head back to WordPress.com. We've just logged in. We're going to click on the dashboard for our web presence, which is called Web 101 in this case. Now, when we open the dashboard, there is quite a lot there, but just take a deep breath when you see this big page at the beginning and think about, okay, what am I thinking of changing? Right now, we're considering the appearance. So if I click on the grey triangle next to appearance, I'll see that an options list appears. And we're going to start by clicking on themes. Now as themes appear we see at the top the theme that we're currently using and we can see that it uses widgets which are little programs to help insert other things. It has some extras, it has a custom header so we can change the, the top to a photograph or something else if we wish to and it has um, the ability just to change the header colors if we just want to change the color of this block of blue at the top. Now, down here we have a series of other options. Now these are different visual styles that we can use. Now let's for example have a look at this one called Ambiru. We can click preview and what that does is bring up our blog as if it was using that theme. So this is what we would get, a very um, simple single column. It has a fairly chunky header at the top and obviously it would be mainly just the, um, and the pages would appear along the top in this black bar. This is what we can see, I actually quite like this theme, but for our purposes we'll use the little close button here. 
and we'll look at what other options we've got. Now let's have a look at what this seen. A calm, relaxing one column with a customizable header. Now I would suggest you probably do want a customizable header because part of your web presence is, is giving it a consistent style and having a photograph or an image at the top that you can also use elsewhere is probably quite important. For argument's sake, let's just have a look at another one. Let's have a look at this one called The Journalist and see what that would look like. Okay, so that's a much more um, minimalist theme. So if what we're trying to do is just emphasize the text and the content, then this very minimalist black and white theme would probably be much more appropriate for us. That's not the mood that I'm in today. And keep in mind, we are displaying 15 out of 77 themes here. If I hit refresh, we'll get another batch of themes that I can sort through. So there's 77 in total, and you have to choose the one that's closest to what you want. But I quite like that Amberu one, so I'm going to click Activate. So what we can see has happened when we've done that is that it appears at the top telling us that that's what we've got and that it gives us a list that it supports widgets, extras, a customizable header and we can edit CSS if we want. We're not going to do that today um, but let's just have a look at what would happen if we clicked on custom header. So what we could do here is actually choose a file, so choose an image from the computer. Now I don't think I've got anything appropriate, but let's just have a quick squeeze and see if we do. There must be something that I can select from my documents, a background image of some sort that I can use. I'm going to use a fairly odd image. You would obviously spend some time considering what image that you chose, but I'm just uploading the only image I've got available right now. And we're having a look at how that works. So if I have uploaded something and it is larger than the available header image, I can basically crop to whatever I want. So for this instance, I picked a very odd picture that I took when I was in Hong Kong, and I'm just going to use the top bit of that. Now when I hit crop header, it will get rid of the bits that don't fit. And now if we go and have a preview and visit the site, we can see that that image now appears at the top. But what's significant here is that now it's very hard to read this text so I might go and play with the header image and move it round a bit to make sure that the text is still readable that's quite important okay but that is basically how we change the theme okay so the next thing I want to do is look at posts and pages. Now a post is um, the name for each individual entry in WordPress. So if you think of a blog, each of those dated entries is a blog post. And in the tradition of most blogs, the most recent blog post appears at the top of the main page. It is possible to categorize blog posts either using categories or tags. Now there are also pages. Pages are different in that they do not appear on the main page of your blog. They are a separate independent page that is not dated and they usually appear accessible in a different way. Often if we look at the top, um, under just under the customizable header for example, we saw the about button. That about is a page and if we created another page, say an exegesis page for example, that would also appear as linkable from that header position. Okay, so let's go and have a look at our blog and see what that actually means. Okay, so if we want to make a post, it's pretty straightforward. We go to the posts section. If I click on that, it will bring up an editing interface. Now what we see here is the post that already exists, Hello World. Now generally we would go and delete that initial um, Hello World 
world test post once we've got our own up but let's go to add new post and write something quickly okay so we get a fairly standard WYSIWYG which is what you see is what you get interface so I'm going to add a title up the top I'm going to call this web 101 demo post I'm going to write this is is very exciting I'm writing I apparently can't spell I'm writing a blog post smiley face I could using this dashboard system I can customize the text differently I can create links I can um, you know ins oh, I can insert images and so forth using the tools at the top here but I'm not going to do anything like that right now now what else do I do I have the ability to use tags and categories I haven't created any uh, categories yet so let's add a new category I'm going to add a category called um, demo and I'm going to add that so what that means now is that this post will be categorized as a demonstration post I can create whatever categories I want I can also use tags if I want the difference between tags and categories is arbitrary these days there used to be a significant difference but there's not really any more so I've got my post title I've got my content I've got it categorized let's hit publish okay WordPress does its thing it crunches that post and it should then tell us that the post is done now I can view the post and just have a look at what I did okay so now I can see the title this is a very exciting I'm about to write a blog post smiley face and that it's filed in demo so demo is the category under which this is filed and if I hit home I'll see that that now appears at the top of my blog with that hello world test post that was automatically created underneath it okay let's head back to the dashboard now the other thing I want to look at is creating a page so if I go down to the pages section and hit the little gray triangle I want to add a new page now we'll keep in mind that the difference is that a page does not appear as a dated entry in the blog so let's for argument's sake create a page called exegesis and I'll say this is where I explain contextualize and justify the choices I've made in creating this web presence now I've got a title I've got content I look here I can create sub pages but I'm not going to worry about that that's not important for our purposes I can preview that if I want to see what it looks like but I'm pretty confident with what I've done so I'm just going to hit publish we'll let it do its thing once again okay the page is published so let's go and view that page what have we got so what we'll notice most significantly is that there's no date here but we've got exegesis this is where I explain blah 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 but if we look up here what we can see has happened is I have an extra link at the top to something called exegesis which is this page now if we go home if we look at the blog generally we'll see that exegesis has not appeared in this main page but a link is visible up the t uh, in this main blog rather but it is visible and if I click on it then I go to that page it's not dated it doesn't disappear or appear as part of the main entries here it is an independent page which is significant okay so we've done pages and posts let's move on to the next bit okay the final thing that I really want to look at is integrating contributing nodes such as Flickr or Twitter so while we've got our WordPress blog set up we've got our pages our posts our themes this is our central node but we also will have contributing nodes so other web 2 tools that we use to expand our web presence now I'm going to use two examples which are Twitter and Flickr to see how we integrate these other services back onto our main web presence page okay so let's go and have a look if we go back to our dashboard and we'll just hit dashboard to get to the top level 
and think about how we're going to integrate these other services, I'm going to scroll down to something called widgets. Now widgets are little tiny little programs that help us integrate other things. Now you'll see that there's a long list here, um, delicious, links, archives, a calendar, Flickr, all of these are little sub-programs where if I just drag that over to this sidebar, it will appear on that sidebar. I probably have to enter a bit of text. So let's, for example, use the Flickr widget. I click on it and I drag it over to bottom one. Now, what's it going to be called? Flickr Photos. I need the RSS URL. So if I go to my Flickr Photo Stream, which I selected earlier, and I go down the bottom here to the RSS feed and click copy. Oh no, let's try that latest click there. And I'll copy that. I'll go back to my WordPress and I will insert that RSS and hit save. Which is done, then I'll close. Now if we go to our Web 101 blog and hit refresh to see what that looks like, if we look down the bottom there, I can see suddenly three photos from my Flickr account appear visible down the bottom. So that's essentially how a widget worked. Now if I had chosen a, a theme with columns, this would probably be on the left or right sidebar, but because this is a one column theme, everything will appear down the bottom. Now I'm going to go to the Twitter account that I set up earlier and copy that. I'm going to go back to my widgets. I'm going to look for the little sub-program called Twitter. I'm going to grab that and drag that into the same area. What does it want? It wants a title, so we'll call it Tweets. And it wants my Twitter username, so it doesn't need the full address, it just needs the username. So I shall just put the username in. I shall pick I'm only going to have three most recent ones to appear, and I'm going to save that, and then close. Now again, if I go back and hit refresh, I should see that down the bottom also. Okay, so tweets, and I've only got one tweet, which is, this is my first tweet, woohoo. So there it is. Now significantly, that title there, tweets, if I clicked on that, will actually take me to my Twitter account. Similarly, if I hit um, the more photos here with my widget, it will take me to my Flickr account. So effectively, we have a link from the, our central node to our contributing nodes. Now, as part of what you need to do is then go to your contributing node, whatever you've decided, and customize that so it also can link back to your central node. But that's not what we're aiming, what we're aiming for today. Now. A lot of services that we would use have widgets ready to go, but sometimes you will find that there is not a, a service that there isn't a widget that's already defined. So what you would need to do then is to select this text widget. If you insert that, you'll see it's just empty space. Then you would enter a title and you would find some way to link to the account of that Web2 tool that you're using as a contributing node, whatever it happens to be. There might be a widget that they, that's generated at the other end that you can cut and paste, or you might just enter a link if there's nothing else that you can do. But that would be how you would include a Web2 tool that is not already ready to go widgetized. But we'll get rid of that because I don't need it. So obviously to get rid of things, you just drag them out of that sidebar. Okay, so that's pretty much what you need to know in setting up your WordPress.com central node. So we've got blog posts, we've got themes, we've got our pages at the top, 
and down the bottom we've got links to our contributing nodes. That's the very basics. Now, a quick disclaimer. This video is not everything you need to know. It's just enough to get you started using WordPress as your central node. It is now your responsibility to further research and experiment with WordPress and your other nodes to create a web presence which meets the needs that you've established. So I've given you the basics. This is enough to get you started if you lack confidence or you wanted a quick primer. But from here on out, now you work out the finer points. Which are your contributing nodes going to be? What theme are you going to use? How are you going to link it all together? What's your exegesis and about page going to say? That's up to you. Okay?